Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, what's up man? It's your man Sean Jackson, man. AKA Glenn Swagmeyer. Right now, we are chilling with SmokingSection.net. Beautiful day and sunset in the heart of LA. Hi people. Everybody's chilling, man. Let's go. Word. Uh, so yeah, man, just want to kind of set it off and tell us how you got involved in, in, in rhyming. I got it. It was kind of a, a no-brainer. Like, I'm a little older, I'll be honest. 31, not a shame. I think that's good. You know, but you know, at that age, you kind of grow up with hip hop, and somebody like me with no siblings, hip hop was like the closest thing I had to, to gravitate to. If it understood me, I would actually talk to it, and it would talk back, and I would get the results I wanted from hip hop. So it's a no-brainer, man. Just identify with me, just like I identify with it. Okay. Was there a song or an album that you heard that really like flipped you out? Or? The song was Lottie Dottie, man. Never forget it. 85. I thought it was like, it was just crazy to me how simple it was, how simply complex it was also. Like, you know, Beatbox and a rap, but it's like one of the most classic songs in hip hop. And, and it made you feel like you can do it. Like, oh, my boy could probably beatbox, so I could probably. So that was actually the first rap, rap I wrote. I, uh, I flipped the words around, tried to make it my own. It was whack, of course, but still, it was all fun back then, you know? Do you remember any other lines, or? I don't. <laughs> Basically, all you gotta do is take, you know, if Slick Rick was talking about himself in first person, just flip that with Sean Jackson. That's all I did. I just changed his name to mine. That was the first one. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, so you kind of... <clears throat> You heard the song and immediately started, like, this is what I want to do type thing? Hey, well, honestly, I actually started off doing the whole dance shit. Man. That was back when, you know, it was cool to dance and all that. But that was that was probably my initial love. And then I think when I first heard Big Daddy Kane, like, really spit, that's when I was like, all right, I want to do this. I thought he was the coolest dude on earth. That was like my superhero, man. Like, he had all the chicks. He was cool as hell and he could rhyme. So it was just like, that's exactly what I wanted to do. So how old were you when you really decided that was kind of what you wanted to do? Probably say, I would say, I, I, would, I would say younger, around 13, 12, 13, but as far as my actions dictating what I really wanted to do, that I really wanted to do it, I would say 18, 19. Okay. What was it, what was it then that kind of sparked it in you? It was like, you know, out of school, tried college didn't work out or let's say I didn't take it serious and I kind of put myself in a position where it's like all right it's all or nothing. I'm one of those guys I'm always been a free spirit traveling nomad so have you and you know that's how I ended up in Rhode Island man just leaving mom's crib man just just going to go get it having nothing in Rhode Island but just trying to make a way out of nowhere somewhere. Okay. So obviously you're born born in Los Angeles. Right. Uh, like, did you make any other stops along the way to Rhode Island? Or? I uh, at 13 we moved to Florida, where my mother still lives. I went to high school there for four years. It's like a little itty bitty town right outside Jacksonville, Florida. So that's where I did my high school. You know? Okay. And then from there, Rhode Island. From there, I just bounced to Rhode Island. And a friend of mine, he relocated to Rhode Island. And he was a sick MC, and we were going to try to do a group thing which we did. Mm -hmm. That was the whole reason I moved to Rhode Island. No family, nothing else. Okay, how long were you there for? I was there for nine and a half years. Damn. Yeah, okay. it's a hell of a state. Let's see, man. We want to go take up through like a chrono chronological order of okay. pre-releases? Okay. Man, countless mixtapes, that's what started us. And then, um, first song we ever did as a group, the group was called Roulette. That was myself and this rapper Swan Naughty. Y'all should check him out, he's real dope. And, um, Probably all that nice thing. First thing we did was a song called Ponchos, man. And, uh, <laughs> but it was actually dope, man. Like, I must say, like, for a first song, I'm very proud of it, man. You know, and um, anyway, that was that was ninety, that was ninety six. That was like our first studio recorded song. Then we dropped the twelve inch in ninety nine, the title "You and Yours." Uh, 2002, I was then Soul Calibur. Oh, bro, bro. Soul Calibur, and uh, I dropped that album, a demo, entitled Soul Searching. 
It's cool. It's cool. I grew it very quick. It was really rushed. Didn't take it serious like an album. I didn't even mix and master that shit. I just threw it out around the, around the way where people around the way really liked it. And that's why they're uploading the shit now. You know what I mean? Uh, and then uh, and Sean Jackson, my first my first demo was called Opium in 2004, right before I left Rhode Island. Okay. On my way out here. I didn't even officially release that either. That was just a couple people had it. I was ready for something new. So, first of all, it's really my first album. Okay. Yeah, it's been a long time. This has been a long process. It's been a long process, yeah. man. Yeah. But, you know, that's what it is, though. You just gotta figure out your way. Like, I'm not like most artists. Like, I, I don't. I didn't do the battle route. I didn't. I wasn't banging on commercial radios doing like, yo, play play, you know. I just knew I always have to find my own niche and then present it. Like when I moved here, I didn't just come out like, hey, you know, I was out here for like two and a half years before people really knew me. People saw my face. They didn't know what I did. I was just in the booth trying to get this album done first. So that's to where a lot of cats just come here and feel the pressure of being heard and seen and Yo, we gotta put something out now, blah, blah, blah. I didn't, I didn't do that. So, kind of a left thinker in that sense, man. I, I kind of go my own way. Okay. I want to rewind just a second. So, you mentioned the name Soul Calibur and kind of, what was the epiphany that that was, that was not going to cut it no more? Um, man, I was in a, well, see, I was, I was Calibur in the group, roulette. And then when we disbanded, I, I was trying to be clever in that soul, you know what I mean, man? Just didn't really pop like I thought it would. <laughs> but um, I, I think for me it was just it was just a whole different moment in time, man. I was dreaded back then. I was, I was younger, man. You know, I was you know, old too. Man, that's six years ago. So it was just a whole different moment in time. By the time I shaved my head and all that, I was like, you know what? Let's start from scratch, man. And that's where Sean Jackson is.